Hey, it's Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And this is all the Kickstarters upcoming in December, or as usual, all the ones we know about right now. And it's a very, very, very sparse month to the point that I have like eight things I'm talking about, and two of them are actually for November 30th and not not December, because because that's what it looks like. Which, the good news for us is this means money saved is money earned, in a matter of speaking. The less Kickstarters there are to back, hopefully the fewer Kickstarters there are to back, although then again... Last week I put out a video on all the old Kickstarters, so it looks like I'm trying to tempt you no matter what happens, so you're never really safe. I recommend unsubscribing right about now, that probably, that's probably the safest thing to do. But while speaking of unsubscribing, go ahead and make sure to subscribe to Shelf Clutter if you haven't already. He does these videos every single week, and if you think I'm feeling a sense of dread trying to fill this video with nothing, I'm trying to fill this video with nothing, he has to do that every single Monday, I think he does it Mondays, every single week, or maybe it's Sunday, I think it is Sunday. Either way, he has to do this four times this next month with nothing to talk about, so I wish him a lot of luck. But in all seriousness, if you're not already subscribed to Shelf Clutter, subscribe to Shelf Clutter. He does these videos, upcoming Kickstarters for the week. He does these every single week. A lot of time and effort goes into them, and more importantly, a lot of information. Time and effort is meaningless if it's not adding value, but his information is absolutely adding value if you are someone who wants to be informed at what Kickstarters are coming up. I use a variety of sources in terms of tracking what's coming up so that I know what's going on and so I stay informed, and Shelf clutter almost inevitably always has one or two that I missed because, well, his information is just, practically speaking, better than mine. But either way, and it's every week, I'm just doing this once a month. But all that's being said, that managed to, looks like I managed to cover a good minute of our video now, a minute and a half of our video, so, so that's good because the rest of this video will be very, very short. Starting off with Harakari Blades of Honor. This is on November 30th. Why am I talking about it now? Because I'm trying to fill this video with stuff. No, but in all seriousness, because it's coming up in a few days, and in case you didn't know about it, then, then it's worth talking about. I know there was talk about whether they were going to push it off or not, but they are not pushing it off, at least not that I know of, at least not right now, but November 30th, Harakari Blades of Honor will be on Kickstarter, not GameFound, some of these will be on GameFound, and Harakari Blades of Honor is, it's a game that's split up into two phases, there's the adventure phase, and then the the other phase. There's two names of the phases. I don't remember the name of the phases. I've played the game. I don't remember the names of the phases. But either way, uh, it has an adventure phase where you wander around the board, engaging with various uh, kind of narrative-driven elements, but your character stats will come into play in a variety of different ways. Both your basic stats and combat, different things will come into play as you make choices as you slowly move your way towards the encounter phase. I don't know if it's called the encounter phase. I don't believe it is. I think it's called it's the adventure and something else. I'm blanking on this. But then when you move on to the second phase of the game, you're going to move into a bit of a skirmish mode, a bit of a dungeon phase where you actually face off against baddies in more of a a tactical grid based combat so it has two phases to each scenario each adventure as you go through it giving you both that exploration aspect and then some sort of uh, combat based finale that's less abstracted you see in the adventure phase your combat's abstract as you go through things but that's basically a short overview of Harakari Blades of Honor a lot more going on, but despite me trying to fill this video, this is not going to be filler of just me talking for no reason. If you want more information about Harakari Blades of Honor, there will be more information coming. And then, of course, the Kickstarter on November 30th. Next up on November 30th, this is why I'm talking about because I didn't mention it last month because I didn't know about it when I was talking about November Kickstarters. But I know about it now, and this video goes up before November 30th, so I may as well tell you about it now. This is Borderlands, the uh, Mr. Torg's arena of, of badassery. This is Borderlands, the board game, as you might imagine. Or or more specifically, Borderlands, the miniature-based board game. I don't know a ton about this game. Obviously, 2K, Gearbox, all of that. But more importantly, this is coming to you from... What's the name of the company? The name of the company is Monster Fight Club. I'm sorry, as I move my head, I have to peer past the camera that I'm staring at to get to that part of my screen. But basically, Monster Fight Club... They've done one or two games before, but they are, are bringing Borderlands to your table. It's going to be a cooperative element, a cooperative game with, a, I don't know if it's the, for sure the player count, but I think it's one to four player count as far as the characters you're controlling or whatnot. It's going to have that kind of zombicide style feel of, you know, a bunch of heroes trying to fight invading masses of something. I, that's all I know so far. I don't have a ton of information just yet. I hope to find out more information, obviously, because November 30th is creeping up slowly but surely. I'm sure I'll be talking about the Kickstarter at some point or another. Reminder to subscribe to two back or not to back subscribe to well the channel if you want to uh, see the regular monday videos where i talk about all the active kickstarters and not this monday but next monday i'm sure i'll be talking about borderlands assuming it's not pushed off yet again we just don't have a lot of information yet but but i mean i like borderlands the video game i like the ip if the miniatures look good if the gameplay looks good the art already looks good so there's enough here to be intrigued and tempted whether or not i back it as a different conversation although with only eight kickstarters that i care about in december and this isn't even in december 
Maybe I'll pay attention to it. We'll see. Next up, we have Magical School of Miniatures. We have the Adventures in Academia from Steamforge Games. And again, we're stretching here. This is We finally enter December. This is coming, I believe, December December 1st. But it's not even a board game. It's board game adjacent. It's role-playing game, and more specifically, miniatures and characters and backstories for, for D&D uh, 5e, basically. If you want some characters, some, some stories, some miniatures, Steamforge Games does do a line of regular ongoing Kickstarters. They've had the whole... Um, the animal ones. I don't remember what they're called, but they had a bunch of animal ones. Oh, here we go. If you're an Animal Adventures fan, this Easter egg is for you. So they have some Animal Adventures stuff in this Kickstarter as well, but a bunch of miniatures. That'll be coming December 1st. You can pay attention. I'm always interested in these because the miniatures always look fantastic and very, very different, but I'm not a D&D person and my self-control has so far remained strong for these things that aren't even really board games. Next up, we have the Palaces of Carrera coming December 6th. This is going to be on GameFound. Make sure to follow this page. There'll be a link down below to everything. Make sure to follow this page in case you want that free gift, basically. And the free gift is basically allowing you to play the Palaces of Carrera with the original set of rules from the original game. You see, the Palace of Carrera 2nd Edition is a reprint of the original. I think this is a Kramer, Kramer and Kiesling game, if I'm not mistaken. But this uh, the Palace of Carrera is a 2012 game that has very quickly been become an out-of-print game that is highly sought after. It's a 7.2 on Board Game Geek, which isn't amazing, but it's solid, and it's one that has generally been widely sought after. You find copies going for $100 plus because it's out of print, hard to find, and people want to get their hands in it. Uh, but this isn't really the time to go buying that out-of-print copy now, because now we'll be coming back to GameFound, and you can get the second edition very likely for cheaper than $100. I don't really know for sure. This is Game Brewer, and Game Brewer does make expensive games, but at the very least, if this is $100, it will be a deluxified version at the very least. So, so I'm not saying it's worth it or not worth it, but I am saying that it's probably better to spend your money here than on a different out-of-print copy of the original game. Plus, they are making changes to the rules as well. So if you look over here, with a redesigned set of base rules and a completely new advanced game mode, which is interesting because if I'm not mistaken, the original Palace of Carrera already had two game modes. They had a beginner and an advanced game mode. So when they say completely new, do they mean there's now three game modes or they just completely butchered and changed the advanced game? I don't know yet, but this is coming from Game Brewer. Game Brewer tends to make deluxified Euros that tend to look very pretty and hopefully have a lot of game behind them. There's a bit of a, they have different, different games in terms of how much, how heavy they've been, how well rated, and how well received they've been, but Palace of Gura is a reprint, and I expect it to do, it's an interesting thing with reprints, and this goes back to, this goes back to a video I did a few weeks ago on the nature of board game ratings becoming more positive. Something we see with a lot of reprints is that you'll have a game that's like a 7 on Board Game Geek, and then they reprint it and deluxify it years later, and suddenly it's a 7.8, a 7.9, and that leads to the question, did it really become that much better when they reprinted it? Or maybe, going back to the video I did, which is based off an article on Board Game Geek, but it, it basically, it could be that people are being more selective about what they play, and they're picking things that are more to their taste. That's why you have things like Atlantis Rising, the original one is a 6.9, Atlantis Rising, the new one's like an 8.0 or something. It could be people are more selective about what they wanted to get their hands on. There's more selection bias at play, which leads to the second rating arguably being a better, more accurate rating, assuming you at least looked an, into the game enough to decide if it's interesting for you. This may or may not have made any sense to you because I'm trying to abstract an entire video that I did already into like 30 seconds of conversation. The point is, Palace of Guerra, good game. Whether or not it's great or whether or not it's great for you is a different conversation. This is a two to four player game, 90 minutes. You're basically trying to beautify a whole bunch of cities in the region, uh, getting blocks of marble, managing the market, being mindful of the market pricing or manipulating the market pricing. I don't know a ton about the game past the high level abstract, but at the very least, if you're interested, make sure to follow on GameFound because if you do end up backing it, you will get that little module, that free gift that lets you play with the original rules, which may or may not be something that you care about at all, but at the very least, it's free, so... Um, why not? Moving on to Call of Killforth. This is coming, I believe, on December 7th. Call of Killforth from Tristan Hall. The last game was 1850 Scum of the Earth. Late pledges are still available, apparently, based on this banner on the top of the page here. But 1850 Scum of the Earth is a game that my wife made me late back, and while I'm not really, I don't really mind the fact that she made me late back it because the art is absolutely gorgeous. And Call of Killforth is continuing the series from Tristan Hall. They have, I don't remember the exact order of them, but they had Gloom of Killforth and Shadows of Killforth. I don't remember which one is first and which one is second. 2017 and 2019, if I'm not mistaken. One's rated a 7.6. The subsequent one, the 2019 one, was rated an 8.0 or 7.9 or something. They've been going, I'm just trying to remember all this stuff offhand, but going slowly up in rating. And Call of Killforth is continuing that series, although you don't need to have played any of the originals. You can jump in here for the first time. No, you can't buy it on this page. You see that out-of-stock thing? That just means that this is a placeholder right now because I don't have the Kickstarter pre-link or whatever. Maybe I'll get it before 
it, something will be in the link down down below. But G Call of Killforth is continuing that. Uh, gorgeous art as usual. A one to four player game of, of exploring adventures. You can play it solo. You can play it with uh, friends. You can go through whatever. I don't know a ton about the gameplay of these series because I never heavily looked into them while they're on Kickstarter. Although now that I've gotten 1815 or now that I've backed 1815, I do want to look more into this. Not that there's any logical reason whatsoever to say, well, 1815 I got, so I should look into Call of Killforth. But, I mean, the last game's like an 8. Point zero. That's a big deal, right? And this is the next iteration upon the series. I mean, Tristan Hall seems to be making games that people like, and that means I should pay attention to them, even if I'm not playing all the games I currently have. Yeah, let's not do that. We'll figure that out. That's a, that's a future Alex's problem. Moving on to Ancient Blood, The Order of the Vampire Hunters. This is over on GameFound. I believe Call of Killforth is over on Kickstarter. I'm not certain. It is possible to be on GameFound. I don't know for sure because at the end of the day, now I'm curious. Kickstarter has been started to be more harsh about what the rules they implement in terms of availability, in terms of how many Kickstarters have delivered and things like that. And it's entirely possible that they don't meet the... I don't know how many Kickstarters they've done. I don't know if they meet the requirements that, uh, that they can have a currently pending campaign while not yet launching the new one. So it's possible this will be on GameFound now that I'm thinking about it. It depends. I don't know. It's possible we'll see Call of Killforth over on GameFound despite the fact that the prior ones have been on Kickstarter. I don't know. Once I find out, well, you'll know. And obviously, again, subscribe to the channel. To back or not to back, you'll find out all the information. Next up, Ancient Blood, The Order of the Vampire Hunters. This is going to be launching December 14th over on GameFound. This is the sequel. Not really, though. It's a kind of sequel to the original The Order of the Vampire Hunters, but not really the same thing. This is from Dark Gate games, they've done The Order of the Vampire Hunters, they've done Neomorphosis, is the most recent game, has not yet delivered, they've done... Uh, what's the other one? The Dark Dark Rituals. Dark Rituals is the other game they've done, and they, they this is their fourth game, I want to say. I think I'm missing something. I'm pretty sure I'm missing something. This is one of the games, Ancient Blood, The Order of the Vampire Hunters. I'm guessing this is over on GameFound for the reason I just mentioned. We're seeing a lot of campaigns shift to GameFound. Now, some of that's because GameFound is a fantastic platform. Uh, disclaimer that they spot, they're a channel sponsor, so take that with a grain of salt, but they're a fantastic platform that has been challenging Kickstarter in the general space, and a lot of companies, a lot of campaigns have been moving over there. But also, I've been seeing some more campaigns that very much do fall into that category of companies that have a pending Kickstarter campaign, and with Kickstarter more strongly, more harshly enforcing their rules, it's entirely possible that a big part of that shift is Kickstarter smartly saying, hey, we have a competitor that's you know, joining the fray, so let's do the obviously smart thing and just start saying no to new creators, to creators that are with worked with us in the past. That's usually a very smart, intelligent... I don't get Kickstarter. I don't get Kickstarter at all. Like, is that... That seem so mind-bogglingly stupid to literally send people into the arms of your competitors. And we're not talking about some industry like tech where there is much, much more risk in terms of delivery or issues or things like that. In the board game space, there is very little to no fraud. Not none, but if you vet a few basics, you're usually pretty safe. And so Kickstarter is just... whatever. They can shoot themselves in their own foot. It's not my problem. I like GameFound anyway. Either way, Ancient Blood, The Order of the Vampire Hunters is not the same game as The Order of the Vampire Hunters. If you have played The Order of the Vampire Hunters, there'll be a lot of familiar territory going on, and if you've played Dark Rituals, there'll be some familiar territory going on there as well. It's taking elements of both those games, adding in its own new thing, a lot of story elements and interactions, and giving you an entirely new gaming experience. Miniatures look fantastic, gameplay is solid. Uh, the, I haven't played the original Order of the Vampire Hunters, so I can't comment heavily on the comparisons. I have played Ancient Blood. There will be a review coming on the channel before the Kickstarter goes up, before where the game found goes up. There I go again. But overall, while I haven't played the original and so I can't compare it heavily, I can say it shares enough of the general positive notes while seemingly to have removed some of the negatives. Like, for instance, I know they removed that that clock, that timekeeper aspect that many players did not like from the original The Order of the Vampire Hunters. But again, different games. Will there be some sort of crossover pack where you can use miniatures or characters? I have no idea. I don't know any of that stuff. But what I do know is the game looks fantastic. The art looks fantastic. The, the, ch the choices you're making as you play through it are fairly difficult. There's a lot of story elements being interwoven, choose your own adventure aspects. I don't I don't know how broad the scale of it is versus how narrow in scope, but all that stuff, that's because I have a prototype, and a prototype with limited scale as far as how deeply I can explore the game. And apparently, there's a free, if you back in the first 48 hours, pack over here. So, if you want the Barkugas, which are these three characters here in the first 48 hours, then yeah, go ahead and make sure to subscribe and follow. Follow this page. No oh, oh, look at this. We got a free gift too. 
What's the free gift? The Follower's Weapon Pack. So, if you follow this Game Pound campaign, you'll get a free weapon pack, and if you back in the first 48 hours, you'll get a pack over there. So, my usual recommendation is, if you are at all interested in the game, make sure to follow the page, make sure to back in the first 48 hours, and make sure to set a reminder to cancel your pledge in case you're in any way on the fence as things go on. But if you are on the fence about the possibility that you might back this campaign, then you may as well back it in the first 48 hours, because otherwise you'll be like, well, now I'm interested later because they revealed this and they showed me that and suddenly I'm interested in the game, but it's too late now because I don't get that pack, which could be a good thing. It could save you from back in the game at that point, or you might just spend end up spending more money on the pack. So you have to know yourself. You have to know whether you're giving yourself a good reason to stay away or whether you're just going to spend more money because I recommend the former. I do not recommend the latter. That's the Ancient Blood, the Order of the Vampire Hunters on December 14th. Moving on to Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia from Holy Grail Games launching on December 16th, at least as of now. I know it's been pushed off already, so we'll see if it's still coming December 16th, and this is a heavy Euro game about Darwin, and unfortunately the name Darwin's Journey was already taken. I genuinely wonder whether Encyclopedia was always the name of this game, or they pivoted and changed the name to make it further removed from Darwin's Journey once Darwin's Journey came out. I mean, again, we have two, two heavy Euro games about Darwin coming out roughly within the same time span. It's the kind of thing you expect. We see this in movies all the time. In board games, it happens occasionally, not that often. But overall, this is the Dicebreaker article talking about the game, because I don't have a full link to the Kickstarter, at least not yet, so we'll see. Maybe I'll have one by the time this video goes up. But overall, it's a, it's a game, it's a worker placement, dice drafting, from the, it's from the designer of Dominations, you know, Dominations, the I think it's called Dominations, the Road to Civilization. I think that's what it's called. I played it, I reviewed it a while ago. I liked it, didn't love it. I mean, that's not true. I liked many aspects of Dominations, but unfortunately the game was a little too long, and some aspects of the game were a little too abstracted, that it became a game that I really liked, wanted to keep and explore further, but ultimately got rid of. Encyclopedia looks great. It's work placement, dice placement, all those fun things. It has the art's very, not, I want to say the art's good, but it's good in a way that I don't typically enjoy, but I do like here. This is, um, what's his name? Vincent, uh, Vincent Detroit, I believe. I actually don't know that for sure. I'm literally just looking at the cover and the art and thinking that it's Vincent Detroit. So I think it is, maybe, I don't know. Either way, Encyclopedia, this one is coming to... I want to say Kickstarter, but I don't know anymore. I just don't know anymore. Moving on to Fantasy Commander. Fantasy Commander, which I do not have a date for this one. I don't have a date for this one or the next one either. But Fantasy Commander, we're down to two left. Fantasy Commander is from, coming to you from 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 uh, Signum Games. Signum Games has a spotty track record in terms of a few different aspects. Their games aren't the best rated on Board Game Geek. In fact, you can't even find them as a publisher. You kind of have to know that it's their game and search for the game. But you can search up The Legend of Sigmund. You can search up with a few of their games. They're okay rated. Uh, they have they've had prior Kickstarters as well. They've had some drama around their campaigns in the past. But overall, they are they're putting out you know Fantasy Commander over here, which is a, a skirmish game with a solo mode where you can go through a single player adventure aspect of it. The miniatures tend to be fantastic. They have a loyal following or whatnot. The game looks like it will be available on Tabletopia in case you want to look into it further. This will be launching sometime in December, at least as of now. And then similarly, we have Paper Company. Paper Company will be launching sometime in December, at least as of now. It's possible that will change. Paper Company is a game of uh, economic shifting economy and all that. Every single round, the, the economy will be, will be determined for all players, and then the players will take actions around that, around hiring people, accounting, purchasing, sales, all that stuff. You're basically managing a company within a shifting economy and hoping that you can outpace the other players. This is coming to you from Flannel Games. They have a few games under their belt and Paper Company, I believe, is coming in December, but I'm not confident at all. But either way, that is basically everything, which brings us once again a reminder to subscribe to Shelf Clutter in case you want more information as far as things changing. I'm sure there'll be more campaigns in December. I'm sure. I just don't know what they are. Marvel Zombies is coming in 2022. Unsettled is coming in 2022. In fact, I probably will be doing a full all the stuff in 2022 that we should be excited about video towards the end of December, but that's not today. Today's just the, the campaigns launching in December, which is a much shorter and sadder video, although our wallets, our wallets are much happier. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you found this video helpful, and as always, have a good one.